Chapter 20 Courage Boise Stage Stop, Orchard, Idaho. Ten minutes until race time. That kid sure does have a big local fan base, Moto said as he watched Manuel signing autographs next to his car. I don't like this. You're sure we can't run alongside him in the race? Vinny asked. No, that won't help, Igatani said. There are cameras all along the route to track the racers. If any of you were seen on those, Manuel would be accused of cheating, maybe even disqualified. We just have to trust him, Stoker said. If Throttle thought this guy was a good enough guy, then we can trust him. And how do you know that Throttle thought Manuel was a good enough guy? Carbine asked. Think of it this way. Would he have stayed with him otherwise? Stoker answered Carbine's question with another. Carbine knew he had a point. Hey, look! Rimfire pointed out another semi driving up. It had Japanese lettering all over it. That's got to be Kirifuda's car transport, Carbine said. What's he driving, Rimfire? I I'm afraid I don't know, Rimfire said, looking over data on his laptop. You had chose to keep his car anonymous until it's on site. The side panels opened up, folding upwards as lights turned on, revealing a highly modified Acura NSX. It was lowered to the cement by a lift as the crowd went wild again. No doubt that's the same one he raced his brother with, Jaden said. He's doing this just to intimidate Manuel. Carbine then got out a set of filtered goggles and put them on. She scanned the truck's cab. The sight broke her. Throttle was inside, chained up behind the passenger seat like some sort of primal animal. He looked like he had been beaten, maybe even tortured, and had bandages in various places on his body. He's in there! Carbine exclaimed. Throttle is in there! She tried to get out of the truck, but Stoker stopped her. You're forgetting we're in a large crowd of people, he said. I need to know that he's all right, Carbine said. I've already lost him once. I don't want to lose him again. Carbine, slow down, Stoker said calmly. Use your head. There are other ways to contact Throttle besides busting into that semi and falling for an obvious trap. How? Carbine asked. Natural frequencies, Stoker said, pointing to his antennas. Has it been that long that you've forgotten our telepathic abilities? Carbine sighed, Stoker thinking ahead. That was something new. Both of them took a deep breath, relaxed and concentrated. Throttle, can you hear me? Can you hear my thoughts? Please say something. Let me know you're all right. Carbine thought, concentrating hard on Throttle. After a pause, she got a response, though it was weak. Carbine, where are you? Stay away from me. It's a trap. We know that, Throttle. Stoker added in. But we have a plan. Don't worry, we're going to get you out, without falling into any trap that Limburger has in store. It's not Limburger you should be worried about, Throttle said through the link. The Catatonians are involved, too. I've been interrogated by Cataclysm himself on a regular basis. Carbine's eyes shot open, though the link was still active. Cataclysm is here? He's in the vehicle with me. I don't know what it is. They just dragged me into it a couple hours ago. Carbine adjusted her goggles and checked the vehicle again. There was a large Catatonian in there, sitting right across from where Throttle was chained up. No doubt now it was Cataclysm. Have you told them anything, Throttle? Stoker asked. I told him I'd rather die than tell him anything. Now he says I'm just bait for you guys. I don't think he knows you're here, though. I've set up a bet with the cat that if Yuya loses, he has to set it free. Good. Let's hope he lives up to his word. As for us, he'll know soon enough. Stoker said. Can you still reach out to other Throttle? I think so. Why? Throttle asked. Because a friend is here to win a race for your freedom, and he needs your support. Now more than ever.
Stoker said, looking out the window at Manuel as he stood by his car with Funta, Charlie, and Takami. Yuya and Kaido were walking up to them. Manuel? He's here? Throttle exclaimed. Yes, and he's ready to go for the break. Stoker said. Though I'm not entirely sure he thinks he can do it. Remind him and his team that he's racing for someone other than himself. Manuel was starting to have doubts, taking a drink of a bottle of power aid when Yuya walked up with his father. Yuya was laughing under his breath. Manuel motioned for Charlie, Bunta, and Takami to watch the car. What's so funny? Manuel snapped, putting the lid back on. <laughs> You're serious. You're going to race me in this blueberry. <laughs> Yuya couldn't quit laughing. <laughs> yeah, it's cute, isn't it? Manuel said in a snarky tone. Just wait until the race, you son of a bitch. Then we'll see who's laughing. Indeed we will, Yuya said, getting out a cigarette from his case. I look forward to crushing you, like I did your brother. Manuel's face took on a scowl. Oh, I know what you and your father did, you cheating asshole. Asshole? Oh, I am wounded! Yuya continued on mockingly as he lit up. I guess it's my fault, too, that your brother chose those cheap Hoosier tires. He finished with a smirk. Those were racing slicks, and you know it! Manuel snapped, stepping forward with bare teeth. All right, time to back off, Yuya. Jaden said, getting out of the semi with Robbie D. If you think you're such hot shit, prove it in the race. Until then, scramble boost your ass out of our pit area. As in now. Oh, very well then. You people are so uptight. I just hope you remember we have what you are after. You lit up a cigarette and walked off with Kaido. <clears throat> ass wipe, Jaden muttered. Are you okay, Manuel? Manuel was clearly angry now from what Yuya had just said. Manuel, don't let him throw you off. That's exactly what he's trying to do. Charlie said. Manuel, can you hear me? A voice said that didn't sound exactly like it was there. It was Throttle's voice. Bunta, Takami, Charlie, Robbie D, and Jaden heard it as well. Throttle? Manuel whispered. He can't hear you that way. You have to think of what you're going to say. He's communicating telepathically. Charlie explained. Manuel's eyes widened. He can do that? Charlie nodded. Manuel then calmed himself and started to talk to Throttle via thoughts. Yes, yes I can I hear you, Throttle. Throttle. Where are you? Tell us so we can- That won't work. Yuya has goons here, Gary. Manuel sighed. It never is that easy. You can still freely go. All you have to do is win. Throttle said. I know you can do it. You didn't come this far just to quit now. I know you're better than Did your brother ever quit? Manuel paused. No, he didn't. And neither will you if you share his determination, which I know you do. You have the car. You have the skill. Now get out there and let that team spend that idea to recruit a new tail fight, if you know what I mean. Give him a reason to be afraid. Hell, tell him what fear really is. Do it for your brother, for Bunta, for everyone that he and his father have cheated. Manuel's face broke out into a smile of confidence. He looked at Charlie, then to Bunta, then to his car. It's time to kick this up a notch, he said, getting in the car. He then looked at Charlie. Everything checked out? Bunta and I went over everything. She's all ready. Now get out there and give Yuya something to be afraid of. Go win this race for your brother. Manuel gave her a thumbs up, started the car, then drove the focus off to the starting line. 